it is pretty rare that you get a whole new way to think about a biblical story. But I did this past week, or two weeks ago, about the story of Noah and the flood. First of all, as I mentioned before, this has not been a great week in certain ways. Every week is a mix, but you may know that two days ago was the fourth anniversary of the shooting at the Tree of Life. The Yort site will be actually in two weeks, but the English date was October 27th. And of course, you may have heard that some people, exactly, <laughs> whose names I don't want to dignify by announcing them from this pulpit, said things that they ought not to have said and then said worse things. And so I ask myself in part, like, why do we care, not just for us, but for future generations, which brings up the story of Noah? Because I read a series of lectures called Death in the Afterlife, put together in a small book by a philosopher named Scheffler, in which he tries a thought experiment that I will now try on you. He said, and then was answered by several different philosophers, he said, imagine you knew that all human life was going to end in 50 years or 100 years. At least, even if it's you want to extend the lifespan beyond everyone you know. Imagine, he said, that that P.D. James Children of Men book and novel came true, and no one could have children anymore, and all of the human race was going to end. He said, my guess is, and I think he's right, that it would make our lives much, much less meaningful. Think of all the things he said that people wouldn't do. You wouldn't do cancer research because after all, what's the point? Why find a cure if there's not going to be any life? You wouldn't study history because what's the point? It's not like you can correct the mistakes in the future. There isn't going to be any human life. So many specialized studies, but even daily life would seem so much less meaningful if you walked around and said, this is all going to end. Now, here's where it gets interesting. He said, if that's true, and I think it's pretty true for almost all of us, maybe not for everybody, but almost everybody would find life much less meaningful if they knew that human life was going to end. And here you might see the connection to the Noah story. But he said, every individual knows for sure that his or her own life will end. And yet it doesn't make life meaningless which is a really interesting paradox that, at least according to the people who responded in the book, nobody has ever noticed before. And he said, what this means in part is we are less selfish than we think we are. We think it's all about us and the people we care about, but the truth is we care about the continuation of humanity. Because even though we know that we won't be here, that doesn't make life meaningless. But if we knew that no one was going to be here, it would make life meaningless. And so he said, you see, you have an investment in future generations, even though you might not think about it that way. But you really do. You want humanity to continue. Not me, maybe not every day. <laughs> maybe not on the 405, but like... <laughs> You want humanity to continue, and you want that for selfless reasons, because you know you won't continue, but you want other people to continue. You want to carry this project forward. I mean, think about it. Why does Noah get on the ark? Why doesn't Noah say, if everything's going to be destroyed, I'll be destroyed too? I don't want to continue if everything's going to be destroyed, but he wants the project of humanity to continue and the animals, but humanity, first of all, to continue. And when I thought about that, I thought about it in a Jewish context, because you know that old joke about the asteroid that's coming towards the Earth and it's going to destroy everything? 
And so what does the Jewish newspaper say? What's the headline? World to be destroyed, Jews hit hardest. <laughs> we tend to see everything in a Jewish context. But I saw when I was reading this book, I thought, why do I care that there will be Jews in 150 years? Because I do. It's because we want this project to continue, even though we know we won't continue. Because we think this is valuable for the world, and not just because we're a part of it, but because even when we're gone, it's going to be valuable for the world. And our ancestors clearly felt that way. Because why did they martyr themselves? Why did they say literally, I will die so that this will continue? Because they believed that there was something more important than the self. And that's why when people say, I'm now quoting Scheffler again, when people say, oh, everything you do is selfish. We, in some ways, don't give human beings enough credit. We do things beyond ourselves, just like the story in the Talmud. When someone comes across someone planting a carob tree and says, you know, it's going to be 70 years. You're an old man. Why are you planting a carob tree? You're never going to eat from it. And he says, well, my ancestors planted for me, and I plant for those who will come after me. And when you recognize that that's part of the message of the Noah story, which I never thought about before, you realize that it's also part of the message of the Jewish story. Why is it that Abraham has to have Isaac? He already has Ishmael. He has a child. But he needs the project to continue that he started of bringing this tradition into the world. Even though Abraham knows, like every human being who ever lived, that sooner or later he's not going to be on earth to see it. And so I thought of the Noah story in a different way as carrying a really beautiful message, both for humanity and also for the Jewish tradition. And I thought this is part of the reason. It's not just that anti Semitism is dangerous, which it is. It's not just that some of us are worried that our children should grow up in a safe world, because of course we do. But also because we don't want that which we think is precious and valuable and our legacy to the future to be imperiled or destroyed. So it's not only about us. It's about the people we will never meet and never see who in some strange way matter more to us than we even matter to ourselves. Because we know we won't be here, and yet life is not meaningless. But if they weren't here, it would be. We have an investment in the future. And we have an investment in the Jewish future. And that is one of the reasons why speaking up, why making a fuss, by not ignoring those people who say awful things about us and our tradition. That's one of the reasons why it's so important. We're not only doing it for us. We're literally doing it for people we will never know and never meet because they will be born after we're gone. And that is a beautiful thing and a noble thing. And we should be proud of it just as our ancestors did for us, which is the only reason that we are here. So each of us, in a strange way, builds an ark. Each of us preserves for those who come after. Each of us has an investment in the future that we won't see, but we will shape. So I hope that the coming week will be better. But either way, I know that the Jewish people will be stalwart, that we will not be quiet, not only for our own sake, and not only even for our children's sake, but for the sake of our children's children's children, who one day 
will be grateful to us as we are to our ancestors that they handed on the Torah, the tradition, the wisdom, and the love that we are so fortunate to have inherited. Shabbat Shalom.